that. She, we stopped everything and we prayed and we prayed and she prayed over me. And by that Thursday, the answer came. So that's one, one situation that I had. Another was um, on my job, I, they were going to get rid of my science teacher, and I needed that science teacher in a desperate way. And I remember um, I got a call, and they said, if you want to talk, you have this amount of time to get down to the John Stanford Center and have a conversation with two individuals. And I left my job, and on the way to the Stanford Center, it was about 15 minutes, I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed until I made it to that person's office. And I was praying that they would keep that science teacher because we needed him. We needed him. And when I got there, the lady said, so tell me what's the issue? And I said, well, we need to keep the science teacher because our children need it. She's like, oh, he gets to stay. <laughs> Simply as that. And I, on my way back, all I did was praise God for the 15 minutes until I made it back to my job. Amen. So we always have to remember that God answers the prayers in his timing. All right, Brother Clarence. Amen. Amen. And of course, it, it, it's always good to pray because um, based yes. on the lesson this week, it's a call to stand. To stand. And the reason yeah. that God wants to stand is because we're in a battle. Yes, we you are. You notice the entire yes, lesson talks about the battle that we are in. And the battle that we are in is not a physical one, but right. a, spiritual a spiritual battle. Um, and, the, and the Bible talks about principalities and powers. Um, somebody grab the mic and read for us, because I'm sure we jump into the battle speech. We, yes. we have quite a few. Yes. Um, Ephesians 6, 10 20. through 20. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, wait on the mic, and once you have the mic, you can start reading for us. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in change, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. 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 Um, yes, Sister Diane is talking about if we want to stand um, in that battle, there are certain things that we need to have. And um, we don't want to jump into next week's lesson, but there's a few things that it mentioned. Um, we need a belt. We need a breastplate. We need shoes. We need shield. We need a helmet. And we need a sword. But um, there is examples in the Bible. Right. And on the Sunday's lesson, it, there was a few examples where the battle cried, cry was given. And, and some of it, um, the first one is in Deuteronomy 22 through 4. Deuteronomy, anyone has that? Deuteronomy chapter 22, 3, and 4. If not, I'll read. If you haven't found it, then I'll read. Um, the first one, Sister Diane, is mm -hmm. that... Did I pull it up? Right here. Oh, okay. Go Sister Kim, go right ahead. It says, um, it says, to 
It says, so it shall be when you are on the verge of, of battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people, and he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart be, be faint. Do not be afraid, and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. How far? Amen. That's it. Amen. That's it. So one of the battle cries that God has given, he said, he said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid because I'm, I'm with you. I am with you. And um, we're in 2023 and we're still in that warfare. And God is saying to us. To stand. Um, to stand. We, um, the, the title of the Sunday's lessons, lesson, sorry, is battle speech, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And it, you know, one of the things that came out of Ephesians 6, 10 to 20 is that we have to be able to stand. And do we actually know what that really means? What does that mean by stating that we have to stand? Anyone? Question. Just wait on the mic. He mentions boldly, mm -hmm. but you don't have to always be so flamboyant to even be bold. Mm. You know, uh, I think how, how what you're saying is um, have the courage to state where things are. If you feel strongly about something, mm -hmm. feel the freedom and the courage to state it. It, does, and it can be in a pleasant way. It could be in a direct way. You figure out the way to do, the, the way to put it and, and have a contrite heart and try to get it across if you if you really feel it. It doesn't mean to argue or anything like that, but it, at least it's just like you, you said an opinion in your personal per You told this lady, mm -hmm. and she was like, oh, wow, I didn't really realize the gravity of it. You know, something to that effect. And all it took was you just to say it, you know? Yeah. Yes. Anyone else? So bold is with conviction. There you go. You're yes. convinced of this truth that you share. Sure. Right. Right, yes. right. Anyone else? Sister Cynthia, thanks. It's coming to a time when we will have to stand. We'll have to stand on what we believe, you know. And if we can't stand on what we believe, then we need to study a little harder so that we can stand. It's standing on little things, you know. Uh, at work, uh, somebody says something that you know it's not good. And you stand on your, on your principles of not laughing because it wasn't good. Right. We have to stand on those little things so we'll be able to stand on those bigger things. And then we have to know that we have faith in God, that he will carry us through. And so that's why our dependence on God, we have to do it now to make sure that we are calling an election is sure and that we are dependent on God and not ourselves. It's so easy to depend on yourself mm -hmm. and, 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 and forget God, you know. We have to depend on God. We don't have anybody else to depend on but him. Amen. Amen. One of the things that Paul is urging, and I'm just going to read straight from the um, lesson, he's urging believers to take their stand in the church's war against evil. Mm -hmm. He begins with an, with an overreaching exaltation to be strong in the Lord, which he repeats as a call to put on the whole armor of God. He supports this call by specifying a purpose to be able to stand against the devil's scheme and by offering a rationale against the devil's a rationale the battle is against powerful spiritual forces of evil in a detailed way paul then reuses reuses reissues sorry the call to arms believers are to take up the whole armor of god in order to stand firm in the battle and that's, that's pretty much how we are going to be able to stand, is being able to stand for conviction, being able to stand for right, being able to stand for God, knowing that God is with us every step of the way. Right, Brother Clarence? Yeah, no, no, true. And, um, and if you notice during the lesson, as you read through the lesson, the things that um, God is asking us to do or to put on, he is the one that is providing it. Yes, he's um, very, that. very yes. important because, of course, we have no power to fight against the enemy, um, be it physical, 
or spiritual. Or spiritual. And seeing that we're fighting against principalities and powers in King James Version said in high places, in high places. but um, the more modern, modern version said in heavenly places, yeah. in the places where, where evil and um, evil angels um, try to intercept um, God, um, well, demons trying to intercept God's angels when, they, when, when God send them on missions to, um, to spread the gospel, to protect us, and, and so forth. And these are the battles that God is asking us to stand, and he will provide the ammunition. Go ahead, yes. Elder. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God will be with you. Yes. Be strong. Amen. Yeah, true. And, and the other thing I just want to add to that is that being strong, right? I could be strong and my sister could be weak or weaker than I am, right? So we have to also be able to encourage, uplift, and pull each other up because we are also going to need to be able to depend and rely on each other as we're going through these trials that's going to come upon us. Um, in Judges 7, um, somebody has that like, you have your lesson on the Sunday because we're looking at, um, at some of the um, things. Judges 7, mm -hmm. 15 through 18. 18. Someone has that and probably can read it for us. Judges chapter 7, um, another battle cry. Gideon was going to war, and God asked, they prayed to God. If not, I'll read it because I have it. Um, if you do, just lift your hand. Judges, it's in the Old Testament. Um, Sister Kim found it. Um, Judges 7, 15 through 18. We can use this example. Can you give it a map? Are you ready? You're still trying to find it? Okay. 15 through 18. Okay, and it says, uh, and so it was when Gideon heard telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshipped, he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into your hand. Amen. Then he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet into every man's hand with em empty pitchers and torches inside the pitchers. Yeah. 17 says, and he said to them, look at me and do, up, do likewise, watch, and when I come to the edge of the camp, you shall do as I do. Amen. I'm 18. Oh, uh, 18 says, when I blow the trumpet, I said, I and all who are with me, then you also blow the trumpet on every side of the whole camp and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Amen. 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 And, and Sister Diane, that's what, um, just by God saying, listen, I had deliver, um, delivered the Midianites to you. Um, the battle was over. The God, so yeah, God, yes. God fought, um, yes. fought the battle for them. Yep. And, and, these, and, and we have the examples, they said, in the Bible, and it's, and, and it's there. Um, probably wouldn't read every text that's saying that where the battle cry was given, but it's saying the underline, um, underline idea, the idea that it is Israel's success in battle does not depend on the superiority of its own weapons or an army that, had, uh, that had numbered its foes, right? Mm -hmm. Rather... Victory is all from depending on the presence and the power of God. The key to the Israelite success was not confidence in themselves, mm -hmm. but firm trust in God's power and his provision for the success. Paul makes um, bold use of these themes, exhort believers to be, one, active in pursuing the church mission. So the battle that we are in, we are not fighting a physical war per se, or fighting against an but we have God has sent us here for a particular mission, right? right? To spread the gospel. And we are talking, you're talking about answered prayer. There is a particular prayer, it doesn't matter when you pray, how you pray, it would be answered once you pray for the, the Spirit of God to spread the gospel. Right. That's the prayer that guaranteed that God will answer to, to um, the, the, um, the attentive to the unseen dimension that impact their lives. And weakness, and three, cognizant of the divine provision for the success. 
and four, always alert to the importance of unity and collaboration among believers. Yes. yes. So go, you pray that prayer, and yes, we're saying sometimes it's, um, you know, to have believers work together, it's difficult. All we have to do is pray. And God's yes. saying that if you pray and you follow his guidance or his guidelines as well, then those prayers will be answered and you will be victorious in that battle for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Finding strength in Christ. Yes. And this is Monday's lesson. Um, we are still um, focusing on Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Um, you can go ahead. How do you see the reality of the great controversy which involves literal supernatural powers as central to, Paul, to Paul's point? Why is keeping this crucial truth before us so important in our daily walk with God? And that's on um, Monday's lesson, Finding Strength with Christ. And that question is, is pretty much... It's pointing back to Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, right? Um, and I'm just going to read from the lesson. It says, Paul identifies Christ as the source of believer's strength with his phrase, in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. The church's strength lies in the almightiest of her risen Lord, the captain of her warfare. Right? It, it stands pretty much in Christ, with Christ. Um, the source of everything, the source of all of our strength comes from Christ. We cannot do any of this on our own. Man. We have to rely upon God to take us through and know where we stand with that. Okay. Amen. Um, the chest strength lies on the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one that died for the church. We have a hand. He's the one that died for the church, and he promised to give the, his spirit to overcome any difficulty. Right. We right. need strength, we need power, we need grace. All we have to do is to call upon him, Sister Cynthia. And I put down here, I said, the enemy is always looking for ways to trick us into sin. We mm -hmm. must keep our eyes open and ever looking and alert. We have to stay alert because the enemy is always looking for ways to trick us up. S small things, little things. It is going to be the small things that's going to keep us out of heaven. So we have to always stay alert and always trust in God to get us through. That's right. Amen. While the initial command announces Christ as active in providing strength to believers, that's Ephesians 6 uh -huh. and 10, all three members of the God are very important are engaged in strengthening them for spiritual combat against evil. God the Father makes his own weapons available as the armor of God. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, 11, and 13, and you can compare Isaiah 15, 9, 17. Earlier, Paul has identified the Spirit as active in strengthening believers. Yeah. Paul prayed that God may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being. That's God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 3, 16. Here, it is the Spirit who issues the sword, the, the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and very important. Yes. And when I read it again this week, it came to mind. Whenever we pick up the word of God, whenever we pick up the Bible, it's not a regular book. Sure isn't. We sure always isn't. ask the presence of the Holy yes. Spirit yes. as we open God's word because he is the one that had inspired men right. to, to write, write to write it. Yes. So if we, if we need understanding, I see your hand, Elder. If we need understanding, we have to ask the Spirit of God, whenever we open His Word, to give us understanding. Hence, including the, not, not just the New Testament, the Old Testament, mm -hmm. and the entire Bible. Elder Steve. And to support your, your concept, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. 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 So the Spirit is very important. Um, so the, the spirit, which is the, which is the word of God, also believers are to pray at all times in the spirit. Um, Paul wishes his hearers to understand that the trying God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is fully engaged in equipping them to battle against these evil 
powers. Amen. Yes, Amen. Elder. It's amazing to know that you have just used the term that the Bible is a very powerful book and it is very mm -hmm. good for us as believers. But one of the thing when I read what Timothy is always saying that all scripture is given to us for instruction, for correction, and to help us in our learning that we may have hope mm -hmm. in life. So without the scripture, it seems like our hope is being dashed against the wall because mm -hmm. the scripture helps us to see ourselves through the mirror of our lives as we go through life. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mr. Diane, anything else on the Tuesday? <laughs> um, if not, we're going to jump. Yeah. Did I, I say mean, Tuesday I would just, Monday? I would, Monday. Yeah, I would Monday. just um, like to reiterate um, that, that statement that also believers are to pray at all time in the Spirit. Amen. We always have to invite God's Holy Spirit in our midst and we just have to do it as often as we can. As Sister Cynthia stated earlier, the devil will use all kinds of small things to get us and turn us against, against what we're supposed to believe. And it's done in rather subtle ways. Rather subtle ways. So we have to really, and I'm going to use the word, we have to really be mindful to rebuke the devil and to ask God's Holy Spirit to give us the insight that we may need to know when the devil is trying to use us as his pawn so we could rebuke him. Amen, amen, and, and that is so true. Now, there is also a great controversy um, in Paul's letter. We know there was a controversy, and, mm -hmm. the, and, and the reason that we need to stand and, um, and the battle is going on not it's against principalities and powers, um, it, it's a battle that, that began even before we were created. That's right. Huh? Yes, yes. It began it in heaven. The Bible says heaven. what? That there was war in heaven, in heaven mm -hmm. and, um, and the dragon tried to what? Overthrow, but he didn't succeed and he was kicked out. Yes. Um, and Christ even said, I, I see Satan coming and <laughs> falling from, from right. heaven as lightning. And he was actually speaking because he was the one that kicked him out. Right. And literally, you know, lift his leg and kicked him out. Um, yes, Elder. <laughs> Before you get so deep into that section of the great controversy, it's just I was listening to Hope Channel this morning, and the, the leader of the group was asking, is there a real devil? Because a lot of people does not believe that there is a real devil. And we live in a world, if he's real, then how are we not really feeling him? Are we not seeing him? And these are the things, the question was up in ours this morning. And then hear all the folks on the panel as they talk about the great controversy to show them that, God, that the devil is real because they, he was created and his name was Lucifer right. when he was being put together. So I just want to just strengthen that part as you go through the great controversy. Yeah. But of course, what the elder is saying, he's not saying that, that God created the devil. He said when he was created Lucifer, Lucifer yes. became yes. The, devil. the devil. So he's a real yes. being. Sister Cynthia. Uh, so, is there a real devil? The question was asked. Well, you see, God had it beautiful, beautiful, beautiful heaven was beautiful. The Garden of Eden was beautiful, and then sin entered in into uh, Adam and Eve, and then they they were kicked out of the garden. And is there a real devil? Look around the wars, the weather, <laughs> the the stuff that's happened all around. Uh, heaven is peaceful. This is hell. Well, not literally, but this is like hell. I yeah. mean, one of, the, one of the ways we could also look at this is from the perspective of um, all the evilness that's around us. When you're seeing um, the hatred that's coming out of people against other people, when you're seeing how we treat each other, when you're seeing, it's an end to add to it, the distractions that are out there. So we used to i know i used to be able to get up in the morning and do my devotional piece and spend a whole hour and all of a sudden i've noticed it my devotional time kept getting cut back because i had to get up and make sure i check my emails before i go to work i get up and i go work out before i go to work so it was like and i realized i was tapping into god's time 
And that's what the devil wanted me to do, do all these other things, taken away from my time that I had designated to spend with God every morning, right? But it took me a minute to recognize it because I have to be at work at eight. So I'm doing all these things and thinking, oh yeah, I'm taking care of my devotion. It, it literally got down to the point where I was spending 15 minutes with my devotional time, something that was an hour. And it took me a minute to recognize what was going on. And I had to catch myself and go, oh no, I need to start my day off with God. I need to spend that quality time with him because I have a stressful job. And for me to make it through my day, I have to give God his quality time. But the devil was playing with me big time. So we have to be so ever so mindful. Okay. Amen. I'm having conquered rulers. I see your hands, Sister Cynthia. Having conquered rulers and authority at the cross, Colossians 2.15, mm -hmm. the exalted Christ now works out the result of the victory from his position as exalted Lord over the powers, um, recruiting his followers as combatants in the cosmic war. Christ leads the enemies of light towards a grand day of victory. Christ already won the battle. He already did. And we have won the battle in Christ because he is working on our behalf yes, exactly. day and night, Every day. <laughs> moment, moment by moment. Yep. And um, so we too can overcome. Um, let me say something. Sometime, and it happens to me, mm -hmm. we don't have to feel it. That if God is working for us, all we have to do is to, is to believe it. Believe. That he's working for us. Yes. Christ already died. He has done the hard part. He has died, died on the cross. Yeah. He resurrected in heaven and he's interceding for us. All we have to do is by God's grace is to rely on his power and his strength and his intercession for us. Yes. And we will be victorious. We will be victorious. It's not something that we feel. It's not something that you, when you feel you jump around. It's believing that God is working on your behalf and by faith. That's why faith is very important that you'll win the victory. Sister Cynthia, I saw your hand. Yeah, I was just going to comment on, on Sister Diane's, um, uh, what she was saying. Because when I came into the church uh, many years ago, I didn't really learn about all that stuff because I was, you know, anyhow, just go ahead. But anyhow, when I met Sister Diane and she was talking about devotion, 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 devotion. Kadari's up doing devotion, she's up doing devotion. Devotion, what is that? You know? <laughs> and then I, you know, learn, learn you know, it's, it's getting up and, Spending that time with God, you know, and um, I'm still struggling with that because, uh, as Diane know, I would fall asleep on that phone. We would have a prayer in the morning, so you know, I, uh, uh, I just, I learned that that we should spend that time, that one hour with God, you know, just, just spending it with Him, praising Him and glorifying His name. And your day, your, your day is, is is so full with love, and so you're so happy because you spent that time with God, and the Holy Spirit can now walk with you and protect you. And, and let you be aware of things, you know, keep you from car accidents, uh, keep, keep you from people swindling you or taking advantage of you. Um, it's, just, it's just something how just spending that time with God will change your life just for that one day. Yes. Amen. There was a question on the board, and what are some of the ways that you, that you personally have experienced the reality not only of this cosmic conflict, but of the victory we can claim for ourselves in Jesus? Why is understanding his victory for us so fundamental to our hope and experience? Have you ever been through any battle? Mm. That's what he's asking. Um, and, how do, and how do you, um, you know, what do you do to stand? I, I think we've, we've been discussing that anyways. And why understanding his victory for us is so, so fundamental to the hope and experience? So it's knowing that what Christ has done for us, literally, standing on the ancient battlefield, because we're running, our time is almost here, standing on the ancient battlefield, Sister Diane. Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, again, of course we wouldn't, <laughs> we, were, we already read through it, but um, yes. we can look at um, Ephesians 6, 11, 13, and 14. And Somebody has to... that? Hector, you, um, Elder, you had your hand up, Elder Hector? Um, oh, you got the mic. Mm -hmm. I have Go the mic ahead. Here. So yeah. While, while when you have it, you got to lift it so we can able to see. Yeah. yeah. So while you're talking about the conflicts and the, the divine conflict that we are facing every day, we is a warfare. 
and we must not forget that, that this warfare is something that Ephesians is telling us that we have to put on that armor. Paul is telling us that it's an armor that you have to put on to fight this conflict. Some of us, it's easy, some of, because we are prayed up and we are daily walking, but those who are not daily walking, and uh, when they come through this conflict, they're about throwing in the towel. They give up so easily. But we are reminded by Paul that we must put on that armor so that we be able to stand when this conflict come upon us. The Amen. whole armor. Amen. The whole armor. Amen. And um, it's amazing. And we, we're doing again, I said, repeating the lesson next week and actually listing the different armor. But we have to put on the armor of God and not part of it, but all of it. All of it. All of it. Um, highlight three successful actions that must occur if a, if a side is to be victorious. One, soldiers, and we are looking, we are under, um, we are under Wednesday. One, soldier, soldiers must what? The most what? Okay. You cannot fight a battle from afar. That's what he's saying. Um, which means they must march to meet the foes. Then two, they must attack and stand fast. And stand fast. And stand fast. Or stand, stand our ground. Mm -hmm. Right? We're standing because God, God is fighting the battle. All we're doing, right. just doing is just showing up. Right. And he will fight a battle for us. Um, fight in hand um, to hand with the foes. And finally, three, they must beat back the enemy. How do we beat back the enemy? By standing fast. Right? Amen. Amen. And because, we, 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 because we, by then we are clothed, right? We are clothed with the whole armor of God. And hence, we'll be able to stand. And, and that's... And, and the imagery that the lesson is given of, of your sin, it's not modern warfare. It's not Ukraine, Russian war. No. Um, it's talking about, it's talking about in, in those days when they fought, um, it, hand to hand combat. Right. Swords and rocks and I, I say elder's hand, yeah? Rocks and so forth. And they, 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 um, in a matter of fact, the lesson actually point out that one of the train, the, in part of the training for going into war, they had to wrestle. Right? Elder, I see your hand. No, this is a question for, you know, not just you guys, but everybody to respond to. It says, what if you pray, trust, believe, but your faith is still failing? All you see is disappointment and you want to give up because all you see is pain and hurt. And it has been this way for years. So what, how do we respond? <laughs> Sister, Sister Cynthia, Cynthia has her hands out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have experienced that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And to the person that wrote that, the only thing you can do is stand. You have to stand on God's word. I don't care what's going around you. I don't know. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care if it's straight up in your face. You just stand and keep praying, asking God to give you the strength and the victory. And don't have strength in yourself because we don't have none. Put all of it all into God. You put it in there and you stand. And you stand and you stand. I, um, I go through it every day. This is nothing new to me. And I'm at the point now where I am really just standing. Anytime, anything. Negative come, I talk about the Lord. I don't care. Uh, the Lord this and Lord that. I sure do. That's exactly who. I said, he's the only one I know to talk to. So I talk to God. Put it in his hands and leave it there. And act like the situation is complete and finished and just keep moving forward. I know what you're going through. I've been there. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. he is still in control. All right, Sister Julie. Yes. <laughs> Let the folk in line hear you. I was just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying God is in control. Amen. Whatever his plan is for you, it's going to happen. Amen. And if he chooses to act and take care of you, he will do it. Just Amen. keep praying, stand fast, hold on, yes. don't let go. Yes. And when he gets ready, yes. it will come at the time it is supposed to come. 
Yes, and, and Sister Judy, I just want to add Amen. to that. You want to hold fast. And in your, when you feel like you are literally at your lowest point, that is when God is really carrying you through it. Absolutely. Yes. And, and um, we all have to always remember there are lessons to be learned in every situation that we encounter. And we have to ask God to help us to open ourselves to learn in those lessons because those lessons are going to carry us through. See, I believe my yes. turn will come. When, <laughs> when it's my turn, yeah. it's going to come and you can't stop it. Amen. Amen. Our time, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, we keep sp speaking of in time. Okay, so that means that it, it may not happen exactly when, when we want. We always see that. But I, I like to think it doesn't hurt if you pray. If you pray, then you let it go. And then, because that delay and that hurts that you may be feeling, feeling could be the strength. Get, setting you up for the strength that it take for something that would that could that could have happened in the future worse, yes. but yes. now you prepared for it, or you not prepared for it, but you but you did your part. You did yeah. you put your prayers out, and then the rest is in the Almighty's hand, and then Amen. we watch for the results. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Those are already good. Um, you know, Advent is answers. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> But I, I yes. think that sometimes when people need, One. you know, more practical solutions to to their problems, and uh, mm -hmm. one of one of the things that when we feel this way, um, we talked about this in on Wednesday night prayer meeting, that the devil wants us to believe that we are so far away from God, and he wants us to focus on the negative things that's yeah. happening in our lives. He wants us to focus on the problem instead of the solution. Yes, that's true. And so we will dwell on the fact that, you know, I'm in pain, I can't get, I can't see my way through. We will focus on, on, on those aspects rather than focusing on the one person who can bring us through, and that is Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing, practical thing that we talked about on Wednesday is that we've got to stay in the word. You've got to pray through the word. Mm -hmm. You've got to pray through the word. The word we've already, God has already given us many of the solutions in the word, in his word, in the Bible. And, but we neglect to, folk, you know, to read that. And then when you find a, um, when you see a promise in there, God says, listen, I would never leave you nor forsake you. You have to say to God, listen, you said that you would never leave me nor forsake me. I'm feeling forsaken right now. Right. Could you, right. could you help me? Right. And then, and then the next thing is that we cannot, you cannot, when you feel this way, forsake, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of, of yourselves, yourselves together. Amen. You have to have fellowship yeah. with other Christians yeah. in church. You know, we, we, we go, we see, we have prayer meeting every Wednesday and we see, you know, what, four, five, six people. Um, but you can't be a real uh, Christian if you're not involving, if you're not assembling yourselves with other believers and studying his word. And, and that's where we find some of the solutions to some of these issues. So those are just a few, a few things that we can focus on when we're, but everybody feels that way. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody feels that way from time to time. Like mm -hmm. they feel, you know, some of the old times used to call it feeling blue. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but but it's sometimes it's depression, people get it into is. a dark place. Yeah. It is. And, and, and I wanna say also that if it's clinical, if it's, if it's something that is, you know, not just something that comes every once and again, but if you find yourself in a deep sense of depression, or, then you need to seek professional help for that as well, because not everything is spiritual. True. Sometimes That's very true. There's a, it's clinical. Yeah. And you need true. to talk to um, your doctor and then talk to someone about 
if you're in that deep sense of depression. And Amen. I, thank you for that, Brother Carrington. And I just want to say that I know that I've been through some hardships. And um, when I was going through it, thank God, I was prepared. I, I did my devotion on a regular basis. So even though I was feeling like dejected and like, Lord, help me how I'm going to get through this, I was still getting up every day doing my de devotion, even though I felt, I felt nothing from doing it. I was just going through the motion. Not realizing going through that motion was what took me through because I had already had that as part of my routine, right? And yes, when we get to those low points where depression hits, because it hit me, I'll be the first one to say it, it hit me back then. And I um, was grateful to the few group of people that I had within my church family back then who also saw what I was going through and they helped me. They helped me through that storm. Of course, God was the, the first one there, but there were times where I needed to hear from my church family and they knew that at those precise moments when they called me is when I needed, needed to hear those words of encouragement the most. So I just wanted to say that. Amen, amen. Um, our time has expired. I know we have given, given a few more minutes. Um, at this time, we're asking um, to do the Sabbath school offering. Any final comments while we do the offering? Any final comment? Make it very short because we're going to cut it in a minute or so. I just, I just want to say that uh, when Diane was going through whatever she was going through and I was going through whatever I was going through, we, we, worked, we helped each other. We helped each other, you know. So um, whoever wrote that note, you need to, you know, talk, pray together, whatever. I am, I'm willing to be there for you. I'm willing to be there for you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for your participation. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word. We know, God, that the war that we are fighting is, is more physical, um, it's more spiritual, Father, than physical yeah. when we're fighting against the enemy, as the Bible said, in, in heavenly places or high places. But we ask that you'll continue to go before us, O oh God, and fight a battle for us, even when we don't even feel like it. Still help us to trust you because we know that you're working on our behalf. We thank you. Oh God, for the ability that you've given to us to be in your course this morning. Um, those that are online too and have participated, we ask that you'll grant upon them the same blessing. Be with, be with us now as we prepare to go into the second portion of this morning service, we ask in Jesus' name that God people say, Amen. Amen. And Amen. Uh, happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath to everyone online. May God bless you.